Okay, everybody, we're going to read chapter three and four of Mrs. Jeepers Valley Vacation. So you need that in your hand. I'm going to look in the table of contents. It says three, rough ride, 19. So I'm going to open up to page 19. Okay, here we go. Rough ride. The plane was as dark as a bat's cave when Eddie and Howie woke up. Liza and Melody still slept peacefully. The only sound was the humming of the plane's engine. I don't care what Liza said, Eddie whispered to Howie. Oh, let me read this again. I don't care what Liza said, Eddie whispered to Howie. Mrs. Jeeper's drink didn't look like tomato juice to me. It looked like blood. Mrs. Jeeper's is probably asleep now, Howie said softly. Why don't you look at her glass again? Eddie nodded and peered over the back of his seat. In a second, he was sitting, he was sitting back down again, ghostly pale. What's wrong? Howie asked. Is Mrs. Jeepers awake? Of course, Eddie said. She's a vampire, and vampires don't sleep at night. She's still sucking blood. She must be on her eighth glass. Maybe we should say something to the flight attendant, Howie said. I haven't seen her in a long time, Eddie said. I bet Mrs. Jeepers sucked all her blood, and now the flight attendant's lying like a lump of putty in the back of the plane. We have to do something. Howie said, before she gets to the pilot, too. Eddie nodded. You have to tell your dad. He'll know what to do, Howie agreed. He took a deep breath and slowly looked over his seat, but Howie's dad didn't see him. Dr. Jones didn't say, didn't see anything. He was slumped in his seat with his eyes closed tight. Howie glanced at Mrs. Jeepers. Her eyes were wide open and she smiled her odd little half smile. Howie gulped <clears throat> and tried to smile back but he slid back down in his seat. What's wrong? Eddie asked. I hope my dad's just asleep. Howie whispered with a trembling voice. Or else Mrs. Jeepers already got him. You have to wake him up, Eddie said. It's too late, Howie gasped as the plane bounced and jiggled. Mrs. Jeepers got the pilot too. Liza woke up with a start and screamed, Oh no, we're gonna die. Melody opened her eyes and put her hands over her neck. Who's going to be next? Howie said. Mrs. Jeepers reached over and grabbed Liza's arm. Yikes! Eddie gasped. Mrs. Jeepers is going to suck Liza's blood. Do not worry, Mrs. Jeepers told Liza. The plane is just preparing to land. We are now in Romania. As the plane descended, Liza, Howie, Melody, and Eddie appeared over the window. Perched on the side of the mountain, a huge castle loomed in the distance. That looks like something out of a movie, Melody said. Yeah, Eddie muttered under his breath, a horror movie. That, Mrs. Jeeper said with a smile, is my childhood home, Castle Hauntley. Castle Hauntley, Melody shrieked. Just look at the tall pointy turrets. Just looking at the tall pointy, pointy turrets gave Melody the shivers. Yes, Mrs. Jeeper said. It is lovely. My mother still lives there. You must be kidding, Liza said. After all, we're flying right past it. Mrs. Jeeper smiled. There are no airports near my home. We will take a train to Castle Hauntley. Howie's dad patted Howie on the head. It'll be so exciting for you to visit a real castle. You and your friends are very lucky. Mrs. Jeepers and Howie's dad busied themselves gathering the baggage while Howie slumped back down in his seat. Liza looked ready to cry. I don't want to go to that creepy looking castle. I want to go home. Don't be such a wet noodle, Eddie said. How bad can visit an old lady be? Howie looked out the plane window at the storm clouds brewing in the sky above them. This isn't any ordinary lady. This is Grandma Dracula. Chapter 4 Batty vacation. An old taxi drove slowly through the early morning traffic to an inn. Squeezed inside were Melody, Howie, Dr. Jones, Liza, Eddie, and Mrs. Jeepers. Liza shuddered as soon as she saw the tall gray inn. Mrs. Jeepers looked at Howie's father. I will arrange for our wait. Okay. I will arrange for our train to Castle Huntley while you get your room at the inn. A moment later, Mrs. Jeepers disappeared into the crowded streets. Are you sure you want to stay here? Howie asked his father. Howie's dad glanced up. 
An attic window was cracked and two shutters banged against the gray, splintery wood of the old house. This place is great, he said. It has real character. That's not all it has, Eddie whispered and pointed. Three bats flapped out of the attic window and flew into the thick cloud of fog. I have a bad feeling this is going to be a very batty vacation, Melody said. Dr. Jones opened the door to the inn and led the kids inside. It was so dark they had, they had to squint. When they saw what they saw sent goosebumps crawling down their backs. Silver cobwebs clung to the dusty stair railing. A single candle flickered on the counter. Melody thought she heard something scurrying near her feet. Howie's dad didn't notice. He walked up to the counter to ring the bell three times. From a back room, they heard slow, scurf, scuffling footsteps. Closer and closer they came. A huge shadow appeared in the flickering candlelight. Howie hid behind his dad. Melody and Liza backed up to the door. Eddie got ready to run when a short man with a face full of wrinkles appeared in the doorway behind the counter. <clears throat> May I help you? The man asked with an accent that reminded the kids of Mrs. Jeepers. Dr. Jones smiled. I need a room for two days. Oh, for a few days. The old man looked past Howie's dad at the four kids. Will they be staying too? He asked. Dr. Jones shook his head. They get to play while I work, he said. They'll be staying with their teacher at Castle Huntley. Castle Huntley? The man gasped, taking a step back away from Dr. Jones. You're sending them there? So you know the place, Dr. Jones said. Mrs. Jeepers is going to show them around while I work. I'm the only one that needs a room. The man looked straight into Dr. Jones' eyes. Are you sure you want to send them there? Of course, Howie's dad said. I wouldn't have it any other way. The old man picked up a pen and wrote down Dr. Jones' name. The old man's hand shook so hard the letters looked like squiggly worms. Is your dad blind? Eddie asked Howie. Didn't he see how that man acted when he heard when we were staying at Castle Hauntley? Melody hissed. Howie frowned. I need to talk to my dad. But just then, the door flew open and the damp wind sent a pile of dead leaves swirling at their feet. Mrs. Jeepers loomed in the doorway. A train is leaving, she said. We must hurry. Howie's dad handed the kids their backpacks and hurried, and hurried them out of the door. Remember, he told them, I'll come to Castle Huntley as soon as my work is done. Be good. The door to the inn closed with a thud, leaving the kids out in the street alone. Mrs. Jeepers is already hurrying down the sidewalk, the four kids rushing after her. Where is she taking us? Liza panted as Mrs. Jeepers led them down some dark steps. It looks like we're going to be in, it looks like we're going, oops, I turned the page too quick. It looks like we're going into a bat cave, Eddie said. At the top of the steps, Mrs. Jeepers made them rush to hop aboard a train. As soon as they sat down, the train started rolling. It didn't take long to leave the city. They rolled past miles and miles of farmland. Eddie tried counting the number of cows he saw, but there were too many. Suddenly, the train squeaked to a stop. Why are we stopping here? Liza asked. I don't see the castle anywhere. Mrs. Jeepers rubbed her brooch at her neck. The train is picking up a very special passenger, she said. Just then, the train door slid open and a woman climbed on board. I would like for you to meet my cousin, Justine Hauntley. Mrs. Jeepers said as the train took off. The four kids stared at Mrs. Jeepers' cousin. What they saw made them gulp. Finally, Liza spoke in a wavering voice. It's very nice to meet you. I'm Liza, and these are my friends Howie, Eddie, and Melody. Welcome to Romania, Mrs. Huntley said with a heavy accent. I am sure you will never forget your visit here. Eddie poked Howie in the ribs and whispered. I think I'm seeing double. Eddie was right. The strangers looked exactly like Mrs. Jeepers. One was bad. One Mrs. Jeepers is bad enough. Eddie groaned softly. How will we ever survive two? Spending a weekend in a castle filled with Mrs. Jeepers lookalikes is not my idea of a vacation. Howie agreed quietly. Even though it was the middle of the day, it seemed dark to the kids. Rain started to fall in a steamy fog swirled up around the train. Doesn't the sun ever shine here? Liza asked. 
Actually, it is often sunny, Mrs. Jeeper said, but I like the darkness and the rain. After all, farmland needs rain. Mrs. Huntley nodded her head and her long red hair fell down her shoulders. I find the fog very comfortable, she said. Eddie shivered and looked back out the window. None of the kids said another word until they had left the train and Mrs. Jeepers was pushing them through the fog towards a long black station wagon. Is that what I think it is? Liza whispered, whimpered. It can't be, Howie said, his voice shaking. Whoever her hoard who ever heard of a hearse for a taxi? To the castle, Mrs. Huntley told the driver as they climbed in. The car skidded on gravel as it pulled away from the train station. They passed three potato farms before turning into a gravel road and entering a forest full of spruce trees. The road grew, the road grew steep as the car bumped over deep ruts in the muddy road. The rain had stopped, but it was still cloudy. Someone should pave this road, Eddie muttered. Many roads in Romania are only gravel, Mrs. Huntley told him. Liza took a shaky breath. All these bumps are making me car sick. We are almost there, Mrs. Jeeper said. Maybe a little fresh air will help. Mrs. Jeeper flashed her green eyes at Liza and her fingers gently rubbed the brooch at her throat. The window slowly started rolling down. Melody held her breath, and Howie closed his eyes. They were sure Mrs. Jeepers was ready to zap Liza into a green lizard. But Liza smiled at Mrs. Jeepers. I'll be okay, Liza said. The air is already making me feel better. Mrs. Jeepers turned back to look out the front window, and the four kids rode in silence. That's when they heard it. The noise started out low, and then it grew louder and louder. The high-pitched howl of wolves in the forest made Liza and Melody whimper. Eddie's face grew pale, and Howie's eyes looked like round marbles. Did you hear that? Howie whispered. Melody nodded. Wolves, she said. The woods around Castle Hauntley must be full of them, Eddie said. The black car made a sharp turn and rolled to a stop. We are home, Mrs. Keeper said. And that is the end of chapter four.